Hello, good afternoon and welcome to our webinar this afternoon from the NAMI network on NAMI Info Navigation Centres. Uh, we're delighted to have a, an exciting panel of uh, presenters for you today. Um, we're very glad to see you all here this afternoon and appreciate the time you've taken out of your day to uh, join us and also the, the time the speakers have taken to, to share their experiences and their knowledge. Um, so without any further ado, so um, we're going to be um, hang on, excuse me. We're going to all be on uh, on mute. We're going to do some housekeeping just to start off with. And please use the Q&A section within uh, the uh, toolbox that you have uh, attached to your uh, attendee slide today. And just for starters, it'd be great if we could find out where people are from. So if you could put down your profession and where you're from in the, in the chat box, you'll see that on the in your toolbar there. That'd be really good. Um, if you need accessibility options activating for the webinar today, you can use that within your toolbar to put up closed captions or subtitles, and you can also um, change the speeds and settings of those. Hopefully you have good Wi-Fi or an internet signal to keep the signal strong for our session today. If you do lose sound or vision, please leave the session and rejoin. Sometimes this sorts things out. If you can get near a good Wi-Fi source, that also helps. Or if you can connect to the network directly using an ethernet cable, that will also help too. Um, we are going to have time at the end of the session once the presenters have shared their work with us to ask questions. So again, please use the Q&A box within your toolbar to ask questions. Also, if you've got comments to make or if you've got examples of NIMI that you've been using in your current uh, practice, that'd be really great to hear that too. So as introductions, my name is Mark Beswick. I'm the National Lead for the NIMI Network in Scotland here. I'm joined by my colleague Rachel Burke, who is the Technology Enabled Care Programme Manager. She is going to be monitoring the Q&A today, answering your questions, but also posing questions to the panel at the end. We're also ably assisted by Mark Glass, who is helping produce the event today in the background. We're going to be joined by Fraser Ferguson from Unscheduled Care in Scottish Government. We're also going to be joined by Dr Stephen Close, the consultant in acute medicine for NHS Grampian, Pauline Kerry, who's the lead ANP in Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and uh, Dr Brody Patterson, consultant in emergency medicine and NHS Tayside. So we're very pleased to have uh, the speaker panel with us this afternoon. We are using social media to engage with uh, our audience today, so if you wouldn't mind following us on at NHS near me or myself at Mark Bezik AHP, there will, you will also find, I think, the Twitter handles of some of our speakers on there as well. And uh, we've penned a few hashtags around hashtag near me or hashtag urgent care near me. So today we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the experiences of using near me in the phone navigation centres, looking at some of the models and processes that have been used in near me and also some real examples of, of the benefit that it's had for, for patients accessing uh, unscheduled care and looking at the learnings and challenges within that. And again, as I mentioned before, there'll be a chance to ask questions later. And again, if there are other topics in the session you'd like to cover, please let us know. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Fraser Ferguson now from Unscheduled Care. And he's going to give a little bit of background on the national picture. Thank you, Fraser. Thanks, Mark. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm sort of the warmer pack for the next three speakers who have done an amazing amount of work over the past two months. It's been quite remarkable. So as we know, Near Me has been in use for quite a while. It's all about delivering the right care at the right time, reducing travel and the green benefits as well. And this piece of work, uh, I've been working with Rachel, Hazel, Archer, who's the lead, Mark and Rosie and Claire Morrison. So we've been working with boards to provide the information and the kit and technology and the training to support the role of Near Me in urgent care. And this is the first time this has happened within urgent care. Mark, I can't see my slide anywhere, should I be? Perfect. That saves me looking to the side and even looking even looking more strange. 
so with this, within the unscheduled care, the reason emergent care, there's been quite a few challenges and opportunities, which I'm sure the next three speakers will talk about. They've been doing all the hard work and I've just been sitting in the background watching it develop. But the aim is to be sort of reducing uh, ED and MIU attendances. It's the immediate ability to see a minor injury, so not having to guess because it's all new. Uh, it's about an extra touch point, not always being a negative, and hopefully some of the speakers will pick up on that. That you know, when you've had a near me consultation, it doesn't always mean that you're going to be uh, your call is going to be closed at that point. It may need to go into MI and ED, but it's like a, it's an enhanced triage to it, and you can start self care immediately. And one of the sort of biggest challenges we've been working with it, it's an adjunct to face to face consultation. It's not replacing all face to face consultations. It's never meant to replace all face to face consultations. It's just an adjunct to, to what we do and a really effective and simple one too. And I think it's really important to remember, which I hope three speakers will touch on, that it's brand new. It's for in urgent care. We're now, what, today, the 8th of February. It's only been since the 1st of December we've been using this, so it's new for clinicians and it's new for patients and for citizens accessing the service. So it's a whole new way of working and I think we need to be careful as things go and develop. But with that, there's lots of opportunities. There's already been over 3,000 near me consultations across urgent care. Uh, one third of them are closed by the expert clinicians in the flow navigation centres. So that's one third of these 3,000 patients not having to uh, head out to the local MIU and ED departments, but be able to be dealt with safely and effectively from within their own house or wherever they are. And the next stage is to look at making the better use of making near me even better, because as I say, it's only been nine weeks since it's been going. And in your chat now, there should be some links to uh, additional training that Rachel and the team are running and in the next few weeks there will be a flow navigation centre near me guidance document coming out to all boards in Scotland and that's only been possible with uh, the great support from some of the people speaking today who've, who've done the work and have uh, put in this hard work sweat and tears to make it work so we're going to be sharing their actual information and support as well as the technical aspects so that's just all I've got to say, Mark. Uh, really looking forward to the next uh, 45 minutes or so and hearing from the three speakers from three boards that have done an enormous amount of work to make this happen so quickly and effectively. Thank you, Fraser. That's really good to set the, the national scene there and, and it helps understand the, the reduction in emergency department attendance already with a, with a, th a third of uh, calls being closed. Uh, that's really uh, helpful to see that, that near being being used alongside other methods to, to achieve that aim. So we're going to now move on to Dr. Stephen Close, who's a consultant at Acute Medicine at HS Grampian, who's going to share their, their stories of near me use with them. Thank you very much, Stephen. And um, thank you very much, Mark, and thank you, Fraser, for that introduction. Um, I, I suppose really just to introduce myself, um, as, as Mark says, I'm Stephen Close. I'm one of the consultants in acute medicine at um, Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. Um, I'm very much involved in the setup of the Flow Navigation Centre within NHS Campion. Um, it, it's something that um, I've always been itching to do, to be honest, um, as part of acute medicine. Um, when we started the, the, the first pandemic, and um, when someone said to me, do you want to start using Near Me? Um, I got very excited, um, but didn't get a chance to use it um, in, the, in the first wave. Um, so through working with FNC, this um, obviously gave me a huge opportunity to, to, to test it out um, from an acute medicine point of view. Um, as I say, I certainly wasn't a sceptic and um, I, it took a few days as part of an FNC for me to get the opportunity to have my um, um, the my first experience. Um, I have to say my first experience nearly did put me off. Um, my first call was a, was a, a, a woman whose toenail was coming off um, and, as, and immediately when I clicked onto the near me waiting room, um, what she said to me was, hang on a minute, I'm in the shower. Um, and all I could see was the, what I assumed was the, the, the wall of her shower. And she said, hang on, I'll move the phone towards my toe. Um, so thankfully she moved it in a direction that I, I got to see her toe and nothing else. Um, but but I, I have to say it, it was just really useful um, and it was really beneficial being able to actually see what it was that, that um, you know, 
I was dealing with, um, and we were able to avoid um, her attending uh, either even the minor injuries unit. So I, certainly moving on from there, um, I've had a number of consultations where it, it's just been really clear how beneficial it has been. Um, a number of elderly patients whereby, you know, they've had people in the room with them, carers, family, and, and it's been it's been great to be able to actually see what it is that they're that they've called for, and and every single every single time um, we've managed we've managed to avoid the need for them to attend either the our acute medical unit as an acute presentation, or as I say, the the, the minor injuries unit. I, th I think certainly for me, one of those benefits, and I, and I always when I'm when I'm explaining it to people, is is at medical school we're very much taught about the the importance of observation. Um, and certainly to medical students um, and, and trainees over the years, you know, I, I, we always emphasise that need to be able to see a patient and the, and the benefit that that provides. From an acute medicine point of view, obviously, we have we are able to do that because the, the patients present to our acute medical unit. So so having near me um, has it, been for me a, a, quite a revelation in terms of actually being able to to see the patient and um, hopefully avoid that admission, certainly to our acute medical unit. Um, and, and, and as, as Fraser and Mark, I think, have both alluded to, that ability to be able to bring that senior clinical um, decision earlier on in the patient journey means that you know we are getting the patients to the right place um, at, at the right time. Um, does it always work? Um, not always. Um, I've had a couple of experiences where um, I, I was trying to work out whether a, a patient had a blue foot. Um, and his daughter kept trying to move the camera because it looked blue and I wasn't sure whether or not it was actually the, the camera angle. Um, so, so I think from that point of view, there are some, you know, bits at the minute, I think, that, that I find challenging. But as Fraser's alluded to, that, that will develop as time goes on. And, and I think the other important bit is that this doesn't replace face to face, you know, and I think that's quite key. You know, there is a huge benefit in doing it. But if in doubt, I will always ask the patient to, to present. But in that situation, you know, I was able to schedule that gentleman up to the vascular ward. So again, you know, in speaking to the to the specialty teams that were involved, and um, we were able to get that patient to that to the right place and be seen by the right person. So regardless of whether I managed to to avoid them coming in, we still managed to get them to the right place by having that that near me consultation. Um, I think the other bit that's been clear to me is we, we give patients a, a, an option. Do they want a telephone call or a near me call? Um, I, the majority of them are picking telephone consultation. Um, so I think for me, in terms of moving forward, it's how we um, encourage the patients and encourage the people who are contacting the Flow Navigation Centre um, to, to understand the benefits of it. And I, and I think once we do that, we'll start to see more, um, we'll be able to see more benefit in terms of using near me. So I suppose in summary for me, I, I think it's a, it's a huge potential for, for um, being a key player in terms of the redesign of urgent care. Um, and, and certainly even from an acute medicine point of view, um, I can already see um, opportunities where we can use it um, as part of our acute medical work, again, to hopefully try and either avoid them coming to our acute medical unit um, or um, making signposting them or scheduling them into to a more appropriate um, part of the system. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a total total convert. Um, I, I, I wasn't I, I probably always was going to be because I, I could always see the potential on it. But I, I think in terms of moving forward, um, I, I think it's got huge potential. So thank you very much for listening. Um, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Stephen. That's really helpful to get that that perspective there around. Again, very real life examples of what people can show you and where they can show you things, um, and, and you can actually see that, you know, that revelation of being able to see see what's going on, and, and again, that, that reassurance about if in doubt, you know, it, pull, pull, get them seen by somebody uh, in real life. So that's excellent to hear that perspective there. We're now going to hand over to Pauline Kerry, who's the lead in AMP for NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. And Pauline's just going to share some of her own slides. So we'll just give her a, a few seconds to queue that up. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. So yes, my name is Pauline Kerry. I'm one of the lead AMPs at the Flow Navigation Hub in Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Um, my background is a lead senior charge nurse in a minor injuries unit setting um, in the north of the city. 
So I'll just start by talking about what the Flow Navigation Hub is. So Flow Navigation Hubs are just one of the key priority changes in NHS Scotland's wider redesign of urgent care programme. The strategic aim for this programme is right care, in the right place, at the right time, first time. The Flow Navigation Hub seek to minimise the need to attend emergency departments and bring an element of scheduling to the traditionally unscheduled emergency care sector. As of the 1st of September, Sorry, as of the 1st of December 2020, each of Scotland's 14 health boards have a flow navigation hub, which NHS 24 can refer directly into. So instead of direct access to emergency departments or standalone minor injury units for what is described as non life threatening conditions, help is firstly available through NHS 24. This is available 24 7 for urgent care needs where conditions cannot wait to be seen at the patient's local GP practice. The patient will either be discharged at this point with self-care advice or where the NHS 24 clinician has deemed it necessary, the patient will be advised to attend their nearest emergency department immediately or within one hour. If the NHS 24 clinician as part of their triage feels the patient requires assessment in an emergency department or minor injury unit but does not feel that the assessment is required immediately, then they are now referred on to the Flow Navigation Hub. Each flow navigation hub will receive clinical referrals from NHS 24 and offer access to a senior clinical decision maker within the multidisciplinary team. Optimising digital health through either a telephone consultation or a video consultation via the Near Me software, the senior clinical decision maker who has expertise in emergency medicine will engage in a consultation with the patient and based on that consultation will either discharge the patient with an appropriate management plan or will arrange a scheduled appointment for the patient at either an emergency department or at one of the standalone minor injury units. The Flow Navigation Hub for NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde is staffed by advanced nurse practitioners with a background in both emergency medicine and minor injuries, retired consultants in emergency medicine and retired GPs. At present, they offer two pathways of referral only, either emergency department or minor injuries unit. But the Flow Navigation Hub staff are currently in discussion with several specialties in order to provide additional pathways and as such direct access to those specialties. This will hopefully put an end to unnecessary attendances at emergency departments and a needless delay in the patient's journey, reinforcing the aim of the programme, right care, in the right place, at the right time, first time. So let's have a closer look at how the Flow Navigation Hub in NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde works. As I described previously, the first point of contact with the patient is with a nurse practitioner in, NH in NHS 24. The NHS 24 practitioner conducts a thorough triage and as a result of that triage, the patient is assigned a specific code. There are several codes available to the practitioner. These codes can indicate an attendance at an emergency department either via 999 ambulance or within one hour or a within one hour or attendance at minor injury unit within one hour. The two codes AE4 and MIU4 are allocated to those patients who are suitable for assessment at the Flow Navigation Hub. All of the coded referrals are sent in an email via the Adastra system to Greater Glasgow and Clyde's Health Board to an admin hub. The admin hub, which is situated in Paisley, is staffed with three clerical assistants and one clerical supervisor. The Adastra system pulls the code from the referral and makes it the subject heading of the email. The clerical assistant reads the code from the subject heading and as a result will either add the patient directly onto the emergency department's expect list, the MIU expect list, or will schedule the patient for a virtual consultation at the Flow Navigation Hub. All the referrals, the clerical team copy the NHS 24 referral into the patient's clinical portal for the clinician in the EDs, MIUs and Flow Navigation Hub to access and read. For the patients who are being referred to the Flow Navigation Hub, the clerical assistant phones the patient to ask whether they would prefer a phone call or video consultation and at this time they are advised of their appointment time with the Flow Navigation Hub. If the patient has opted for a video consultation, they are sent a link and advised to access the link five minutes prior to their appointment time. When the patient is scheduled for an appointment with the Flow Navigation Hub, they are allocated to a quick book clinic on Greater Glasgow and Clyde's track care system. This is called a ward attenders list. The staff in the Flow Navigation Hub can see all the patients on their ward attenders list and prior to the patient's consultation, the clinician is able to access the NHS 24 referral from the clinical portal to get some background to the referral. 
So as with any major service development, there will always be teething problems or hiccups in the setup of the service. One of the first issues identified was the appropriateness of some of the referrals received from NHS 24. Early communication and engagement with staff at NHS 24 through the Safe Space meetings has enabled the forging of excellent working relationships, which has enabled not only an understanding of each other's role in the overall process, but has provided a channel for feeding back to the NHS 24 team and in turn improving the service. Some of the learning from these meetings includes the understanding of the national aspect of NHS 24 and the difficulty they have attempting to tailor referrals to the different prerequisites of each of the 14 health boards. It is not only communication with NHS 24 team which has been essential, but early engagement with all key st stakeholders has been crucial in order that all involved understand each other's part in the process. Engaging with emergency care lead nurses, CSMs and lead senior charge nurses at the minor injury units has enabled the hub to share snapshots of activity and positive results in order to raise awareness of the impact that is being made by the Flow Navigation Hub and the potential impact as we progress. This has been important in these early stages where what they have seen is a number of patients appearing on an expects list where previously there was none. Early engagement and sharing of results have allowed the hub to clarify that not only would these patients have been attending ED anyway, but actually the hub has been able to manage a number of these patients themselves without the need for emergency department or minor injury unit follow up and therefore have saved a number of attendances at these sites. From an operational perspective, there have been a few technical difficulties experienced with the near me consultation, but these have been very few. And they've all been a problem which has had its root on the patient's end of the call, unfortunately, ranging from poor Wi-Fi connection or to poor understanding of the technical equipment. There has also been challenges identified with developing an operational procedure for accessing interpreting services. Greater Glasgow and Clyde's Health Board use an interpreting service from Capita Live Link, which connects clinicians to an interpreter almost immediately. Instantly. The use of this service on the phone call consultations has been seamless, but it has become apparent that Capita do not have the IT capability to support video consultation. Our aim is to make the right care accessible to everybody and that every patient can use this service to equal effect. So, this has presented a challenge, a challenge that we are continuing to examine and to attempting to resolve along with Capita. So, I'll finish the presentation off with some personal experiences. Um, so the first patient, um, and I would what I would say is that these patients represent wider themes of um, what we're seeing in the Flow Navigation Hub. So the first patient is an elderly man that we saw with complex past medical history, which included lower limb amputation. The patient had fallen onto his stump while practicing walking with his prosthesis. The patient had not tried any self-care as he'd been extremely concerned that he'd done some serious damage and had his wife call NHS 24 more or less immediately. After a video consultation with one of my colleagues, which allowed for close inspection of the patient's leg and for a detailed history to be taken, a potential diagnosis of contusion to stump was discussed. A treatment plan was created which involved robust self-care and safety netting, and the patient expressed a relief at being able to stay at home. So the second patient was a patient in his mid-40s who had suffered a head injury three days prior to his contact with the Flow Navigation Hub. He had been seen in an emergency department and discharged with head injury warning advice. But the patient was concerned and had called NHS 24 because the night before he felt he could not concentrate on the conversation around the dinner table. He was also concerned about ongoing headache, despite this being relieved by paracetamol. The near me software enabled the clinician an insight into the overall condition of the patient and a more holistic assessment was achieved by, by being able to rule out signs of pallor or distress, etc. The patient was reassured that the symptoms he was experiencing are common symptoms post head injury and that they usually resolve in time. The patient was reminded of the symptoms to be aware of and if developed to call back or attend his nearest emergency department. This patient expressed gratitude at not having his feelings dismissed and at the informed reassurance. And the third call was from a, um, a carer from a nursing home. They had called about one of their elderly male patients who had stumbled while transferring from bed to chair, hitting his lower lip area off his bedside table, sustaining a wound to the inner aspect of his lip. The staff were concerned that the elderly man may require stitches to close the wound and therefore attendance at a hospital setting. The Near Me software video quality is actually very good and as such facilitated a good assessment of the wound. This enabled the 
um, hub clinician to ascertain that the wound was more of a skin loss type wound and fairly superficial and as such did not require closure, negating the need for attendance at a hospital. Advice around cleaning the area was given and staff remarked that the consultation had reassured them about the management going forward. Okay, thank you for listening. Um, I'll hand back to you, Mark, and I'll answer any questions later. Thank you, Pauline. That was, that was really good to get that, that detailed description of, of, of the process and, and how uh, what happens to patients when they, when, they, when they approach your service for help. Um, and again, shifting that from unscheduled to scheduled, that, that was really key to hear about this. And, and again, the, the teamwork that's involved with that was really evident. So that was super, thank you. And again, your personal experiences at the end uh, we're really good to cement that as well. So um, let me just um, queue up the slides again and we're going to introduce Dr. Brody Patterson to you now, who's a consultant in the Winter Medicine NHS Tayside. And um, over to you, Brody. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, our experience follows on from Pauline's. Um, our um, Flow Navigation Centre is currently within the emergency department at Nine Wells Hospital and is manned by the emergency medicine consultants um, eight o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night and then our senior registrar is keeping an eye on things after that. Uh, as Pauline said, we're taking the referrals from NHS 24. Uh, the AE within four hours that would have previously come to us is now sent to the navigation hub and also the suitable for MIU within four hours is also uh, sent to us. Our phone navigation hub will also take the professional professional calls from the Scottish Ambulance Service. We support our emergency department in our district general hospital. The MIUs in Tayside at our growth and forth are geographically uh, remote, so we support them by the same um, centre and we also uh, support the GPs within the community and also uh, perhaps more ad hoc, we support the prison medical service, we support the local uh, military bases. Uh, we do this by the use of the uh, recorded telephone um, uh, number. We use the Consultant Connect service to give one point of contact into the ED consultant. Uh, there are three lines, so it should never be uh, engaged. The benefit of this is to trace who's phoned us and also to record the the call. Um, we have NHS 24 sending the referrals to us uh, via Adastra and we use the Adastra system within the Flow Navigation Hub. It seems to be quite stable. It's uh, It's been well used and out of ours for the last 10 years and we'll deal with our calls within the Adastra system. And really our hope, as a couple of people have said, is it was all about um, uh, the, for the benefit of the inhabitants of Tayside. We don't really want somebody having to um, cross that threshold of getting somebody ready, travelling a distance, come to the emergency department when it could have been either dealt with as self-care advice or yes, we need to see that, but it's snowing, it's 11 o'clock at night, why don't we see you in the morning? So we found it quite helpful for that. Um, we had pretty much pencilled in the self-care review of wounds, the self-care review of injuries, and also the ED now MIU um, uh, referral from the injury and it's worked to that extent. Um, we have uh, been quite impressed as Pauline said by the video quality uh, that we see at our end particularly with the devices that people have at the other end. It's allowed us to assess wounds for self-care, uh, to assess wounds to self-present um, it's allowed us to plan, for example, uh, looking at uh, a swollen ankle. Yes, that can come down within the next four hours or it's three o'clock in the morning. That's fine to present first thing in the morning. We've also found it to have unexpected benefits. A couple of occasions we've been able to look at the mechanism of an injury. For example, a lady contacted NHS 24 to say that her ceiling had fallen on her. And with the use of her tablet was able to actually show the plaster and lath section of ceiling, how much had fallen in her, just to give us some sort of idea of the energy that was involved. Uh, likewise, somebody else that had dropped something on their toes. Um, we've also found it of benefit when something is not relevant to emergency medicine. Uh, I had somebody with a dental abscess uh, living remotely who previously would have 
been told to attend. In fact, I was told to attend. This was us jumping into the um, uh, direct referral section of the Dastra. We had a look, dental abscess. And we were able to put them in touch with the emergency dental service. Again, really impressed by the, uh, the uh, quality of the video that we were getting. And we've also been able to use it on one occasion for a specialist input uh, when we got a direct referral from a nursing home uh, to us for advice. They use near me extensively for their outpatient appointments. They were able to near me um, a 5D old flap wound on the back of a hand, um, which was of um, some problems with the skin survival. And we were then able to bring, I would normally have looked at that scheduled for the for the next hand clinic for them to physically see the um, the flap. We're again able to schedule a, a plastic uh, surgery consultant in to examine that. And the old lady didn't need to leave the, um, the nursing home. We found it working, I would have to say better than expected. Um, with normally we would speak to someone by telephone and then if we felt that a near me video link was going to be beneficial uh, the admin staff with us would um, send the link to their device by a text or by email however as a bit of an experiment anyone under 25 i've just been sending them the link and they just intuitively are opening it and and, and using it well um, i've been impressed by the ability of people to use it at all ages. Uh, we are recommending the elderly use another family member, uh, particularly if they can access grandchild, student sort of member that's again uh, a digital native. We are getting good feedback from our users, as Pauline said. We are um, having people quite and this is purely like anecdotal level, we're quite impressed with the ability to be seen in a relatively uh, good time turnaround and actually get a, an outcome that's beneficial to them. Uh, we are very aware of the, in, the potential for inequality within this system. And we have to stress to people that the gold standard is that they can still visit the emergency department. And that would be our gold standard and that, that this is an addition. And, and, and as we've heard that the, um, the prevalence of suitable devices, but in particular that people have actually got data or fast enough Wi-Fi is, is one of the areas of potential problem. The other thing that we um, are also aware of is the ability to have somewhere private to actually retreat to, to make a near me call. And in busy households, um, particularly the young, those with protected characteristics, it can be difficult for people to actually slope off, find an area get some peace and quiet and be able to um, speak to uh, clinicians without arousing suspicion from other people in the household. So we're aware of that as a senior team and then, as I said our gold standard is to invite people down. Um, advances that we're looking forward to. Uh, we, our flow navigation hub is emergency medicine based at present but we'll shortly be bringing in uh, a member of the Scottish Ambulance Service and also an advanced nurse practitioner and it's hoped we we'll bring in somebody from the acute medicine unit and also from paediatrics. As we heard from Stephen, um, we'll be able to expand more and offer uh, acute medicine review. The other bit we're looking forward to is when children start to get referred to it by NHS 24. I'm looking forward to being able to assess a bumped head 50 miles away in Montrose and uh, reassure parents that they don't need to do 100 mile an hour um, sorry, per hour, 100 mile distance round trip uh, to have their child's head looked at if we can provide that service. And also looking forward to the potential for um, taking photographs and actually recording into the patient EPR on track here. If we've seen a wound, if we've seen a, a, a flap, uh, an incised wound. Um, so we're just uh, speaking to our internal um, governance people about uh, can we capture a screen capture and drop that into track here. So to summarise, we have found it of benefit. It's working better than expected. It's been embraced by the staff using the Flow Hub and it would appear by the people that we're contacting and speaking to. Thank you.
Thank you, Brody. That was really excellent to hear. I think all the sectors that you're you're using the technology with, it's been excellent to hear about that. And, and the, the holistic nature of the assessments and the background that you can get the richness of that you can get that you wouldn't necessarily get over the phone, but you couldn't achieve if they came in to see you. Um, and reassuring again to hear, as with others, that the patient feedback that's been really helpful from, uh, from people being seen by you. Um, and again, we, we're all very aware of the challenges that that, that are that sit with some people where technology or privacy is is, is an ongoing challenge for them. So yeah, acutely aware of that. Um, so that's that's the information that we've that we've shared with everybody this afternoon. Um, I'm going to pass over to Rachel now, and hopefully we will have had some questions from the Q and A. So uh, how's it looking, Rachel? Hi there. Uh, we've got a couple of questions, but please do feel free to post, continue to post your questions and I'll collate those for the panel. Uh, one question is, how have patients' views of near me been and what have you done to encourage patients' use of near me or understanding of it? Stephen, I might throw to you first. I know you mentioned that patients are moving more towards telephone, but I'll be really interested to understand what your ideas are in Grampian to maybe encouraging the use of near me and what you've tried so far. Um, thank you, Rachel. Um, yeah, I suppose um, I think Brody's point was a very valid point, actually, with some groups we may just have to send them the, the near me link. But what I found in terms of the call handlers who are in the room, um, sometimes it's the language that, that really helps. Um, we've got a couple of call handlers who, who describe it as um, a doctor will FaceTime you. Um, and I think because it's language that they understand, um, you tend to find those are the ones that are more likely to um, accept a, a near me consultation. So I certainly think it is about that that um, that understanding of the patients. Um, and you know, I, I I would hope that we would continue to try and do that. And as I say, I do quite like the idea of roadies of just actually sending them the near me link. Thank you, Stephen. Pauline, do you have any anything to add? To that from the GGC perspective? Yeah, I, I would say we found the same, that people seem to be opting more for a telephone call. Um, and it's that decision, um, that opt-in is made when the admin hub call the patient. Um, but actually, when they have come through to us for the telephone consultation, if we think that it's something that we could make a better decision about, if we could actually see the injury, we are able to push forward the link um, via text message from the Near Me software. And often, if we've had a bit of a conversation with the patient, um, it's kind of won them round to some extent and they're happy to invite us into their home. I think people feel we've had comments like, oh, listen, I'm just in my pyjamas or I don't know if people are have this embarrassment about um, I haven't dressed up for this consultation kind of thing, but um, actually just having a bit of conversation, first of all, almost wins them over. Thanks, Pauline. That's a really good point because welcoming someone into your home is quite an intimate thing. So, yeah, to have that conversation, to feel comfortable and having met someone over the phone first um, may just make that a little more comfortable. That's a really good point. Thank you. Brody, do you have anything to add? No, I, I think my colleagues have pretty much covered most things there. Excellent. Uh, another question was around uh, how do you encourage or how have you encouraged within your boards clinicians to use near me within the Flow Navigation Centre? Has that been difficult and what has worked for you? Brody, I'll hand over to you first. There was some reluctance. But I think the ease of use of near me and how good the quality is um, pretty much won everybody over, uh, including at three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, I got a text message from one of our retired consultants who'd come in to, uh, to man a shift telling me that he'd just done his first near me and how easy it was. I reckon that was a, a great vote in favour of the technology behind near me. So um, I think people are just naturally becoming um, happy to use it. And the second point is that we'll teach each other how to use it. It's not something that we're imposing, it's something that they're using and sharing. Excellent. Thank you, Brody. Stephen, what has that your experience in Grampian been? Uh, pretty similar to what Brody's alluded to, I think. I think I think the fact that it is very easy to use 
you know, once you've had once you've had your first go, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and so I think once people get to use it, they, they see how easy it is. And, and I think the other bit is actually they see the benefit of it. You know, um, I, I, again, as clinicians, we like to be able to see things. Um, and I think so from our point of view, um, in Grampian, um, it is predominantly acute medicine consultants who are manning it at the minute. And um, from a from a flow navigation centre point of view, we have a separate minor stream. Um, and I think from my you know from my colleagues, um, when they see the benefit of it, that I think again they're quite excited about the the potential of using it. Thank you, Stephen. Pauline, do you have anything to add? Just to, to agree with what Stephen and Brody have said, um, what I would say for in terms of Greater Glasgow and Clyde's Flow Navigation Hub is we have all remarked about the collegiate supportive um, nature of the environment here and actually supporting colleagues who are a bit unsure about using the software has been crucial to making it um, successful. Um, so nobody's been kind, if they were unsure at the beginning, certainly everybody's getting a bit more confident with using it. Excellent. That's great to hear that you're all supporting. It. It's all about supporting each other and, and helping those just to get up to speed and how to use NIMI. I know some other boards were exploring um, doing some shadow work, so having um, the flow navigation staff shadowing some other clinicians, such as physios, who are using NIMI well in that board just to get that confidence up. But when you've got clinicians like yourselves already in, in the flow navigation hub, that makes it quite simple for your boards. Um, We've got a question around connectivity. Have there been any particular difficulties with connectivity um, from a patient's end? And what has your experience been with that? Uh, Stephen. Uh, yeah, so um, no, I've had no problems with um, connectivity um, from a patient end um, or from my end. Um, it is sometimes the challenges I alluded before is sometimes trying to get the the patient to, to angle the camera on their phone the right way um, so you can see it. So from a practical point of view, those are the only really challenges I've had, but certainly the connection's always been, been perfect. Excellent. Uh, Brady, what's your experience with connectivity in Tayside? I've also been very fortunate actually that people have either had Wi-Fi or enough 4G that they've been able to connect through and um, Yes, as Stephen says, the addition to connectivity is the ability to flip between the two cameras. Um, you have to talk a few people through that just so that they can go, get onto the, the better resolution camera on the back uh, for wounds and um, for injuries. But uh, no, it's um, I'm very pro it. It's uh, been quite a benefit to us. Excellent. Um, and just for those who aren't as familiar with using near me, there's two um, different cameras, often patients use a smartphone or um, smart device. And so there's two cameras. So you've got the forward facing camera and we've got the rear facing camera. Um, so the rear facing camera often has a better picture quality. So if you do need to look closer into a wound, you can step the patient into how you can switch that camera just to get a better view. Uh, Pauline. So we, we have had a few uh, connectivity issues but not not many literally a handful since we started um, and they've been mostly well all on the patient's end and they, they ranged from just their understanding of the technology that they're using so trying to get them to flip the camera that kind of thing but also the some people seem to mute us and we can't hear them um, but we have been able to use the chat um, part of the near me so we can speak to them and say show me this or move the camera a wee bit slower once we've looked at this I'll phone you back so that's been very few but we've still been able to make it work to our advantage. Thanks Pauline and that's a really good point that you don't always need to have the the verbal capability that you do have that chat, chat functions that's a great troubleshooting idea. We've got a question here and Fraser, I might bring you in for this one. Um, with the emphasis of being on right care, right time, right place first time, would the aim of first time objective be better met at the patient's first point of assessing through NHS 111? Is there any vision for using near me by clinicians in NHS 111? I don't know. 
<laughs> would, like be the, would be the answer to anybody from 24 on the, the call. We can definitely take this away. We yeah. are working currently with SAS to um, explore the use of near me within SAS. Oh, Brady, I'll hand over to you. You've got your hand up. So from our experience, the majority of the calls are taken by call handlers rather than clinicians. Um, so there's a lot of algorithm driven referral pattern. Um, and what the flow hubs are doing is in effect uh, taking on um, the clinical risk and decision making um, that's passed down from NHS 24. If one was to redesign the whole of NHS 111, NHS 24, as the, as, as the, um, the question from Nan Kirkwood says, one might go for a different model and have more risk taking in the centre. Uh, but this is our this is our current model. Excellent. Thank you, Brady. Does anyone else have anything to add to that question? No. I think I, Stephen I had something. Sorry to, to add another bit. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't in relation to that. It was really following on from um, what Pauline said about the chat function. The chat function is brilliant um, because sometimes there'll be a, 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 you know, being able to have that that sort of uh, typed bit to have a conversation with patients. But also the bit I found is that you'll, um, the patient might not be there if you've come into the appointment room maybe five, ten minutes after words. They've maybe gone off and, you know, made a cup of tea or something. Um, and, and it's quite nice to be able to to put in the chat, you know, um, I called, you know, I'll call back again in five, ten minutes. So they, they don't think that they've either missed an appointment or you're you're ignoring them. So that's I, I really like the chat function. Excellent. Thank you, Stephen. You've all mentioned some examples of some ways that NIMI has been beneficial for use um, within your service. Are there any conditions or any presentations that you've found difficult for using NIMI? Any particular challenges that you've faced in using near me in assessing patients? Uh, Brady. Um, so far, no. Um, we have, I've been chaperoned a couple of times. Um, but otherwise, um, off the top of my head, uh, nothing that we've found inappropriate to near me. But that's probably because of the uh, selection of the cases that we will speak to by telephone. And then our model is to then select a subset for, for near me if we think it will be a benefit. Excellent. That's a good point. And you've got quite a triage process um, in place so when you do finally get to seeing someone via near me, um, it's likely to be appropriate. Stephen, what's your experience been? Uh, again, as Brody's alluded to, not a lot. I think the only real challenge we had at the beginning was the language aspect of it, um, but we very quickly spoke to our local near me person and got it fixed and got a solution. Um, but apart from that, there's been nothing else. And so pulling. Um, so as I alluded to in my presentation, we've had there's been a challenge with um, the interpreting services um, using the phone call consultations. It's perfect. It's working smoothly, but they don't have the technology to support a video consultation. So as yet, we've not had anyone who has requested a video consultation who also requires interpreters. So it's not been an issue, but it's something that we're continuing to examine and just in terms of the last conversation about um, the NHS 24 clinicians using the near me and um, I think what makes this um, special the flow navigation hubs is that you have clinicians who have an expertise in emergency medicine that's been the feedback from NHS 24 in our safe space meetings they are they are um, practitioners have a broad base, whereas you're referring somebody in with an urgent care issue to see somebody who has an expertise in urgent care, um, which can often mean that they are more reassured because they're they're having they're getting more informed advice. Excellent, thank you, 
Pauline. Fraser, did you have any comments on um, with your engagement with the boards, what's worked effectively, what hasn't? Not really. I, I, I say it, as I said, I keep going, but it's still very new. And I think the best example is the, the, the ANP and TGC when I asked them, how is he getting on and what, why, what pace, why would you use it? They said, why wouldn't you? That was the obvious answer that I didn't think of. So it's all, it's all new. I think boards will use it more as they get used to it. Citizens will get used to it more. And then the next sort of stage in the whole improvement journey will be that outcomes will change. So perhaps people will be a bit less risk adverse as they become more used to it. And perhaps they will start finding out some conditions are, are not worth using a video call for and they'll bring them in. But I think that's going to evolve as the whole RUC programme changes. I don't think it'll be the same now as what it will be in maybe six, nine months time. Excellent. Thank you, Fraser, and thank you all. That is um, all the questions we have, Mark, so I'll hand back over to you. Thank you, Rachel, for uh, comparing that. Thank you to the panel for answering everything in such detail. It was really good to, I think, just to, the, the elements of uh, teaching each other and supporting each other um, was really good to hear. And, and again, I think the thing we've, we really picked up on is, is that trust and relationship the public have with you over the phone initially, but then because they've had that conversation, they're more willing then to, to open up on a, on, a, on a video call. So I think that's something we need to, to, to bear in mind is that is that trust and relationship we have with the people seeking help from us. Um, and also the innovative use of chat and the camera options. Those are all really good, powerful tools that are that, that, that your disposal to um, use with Near Me. What I'd like to do now before we finish is just to ask you if I just popped a link to a survey in the uh, Q&A section. It's just, just five questions long. It takes about a minute and a half to do just a little bit of information about your experience today, but also how can we as a network support you in near me use uh, in the future? Um, we'll put a recording up of the presentation from today. So uh, if you've not been able to join or you've got colleagues that you want to share the presentation, the, a webinar with you can do that and we'll also summarize the Q&A questions and the answers from the panel so you'll have a package of resources along with some of the links that we've also shared the other uh, area to get information and links from are the two websites here where we've got nearme.scot and the tech.scot near me sites both these will give you information around uh, near me but also for the public as well as um, your own professional colleagues as well. So um, it only really comes now to say thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, for taking time out of your busy schedules. I appreciate things are pretty hectic out there at the minute uh, and we're really grateful for our panellists gathering resources um, and being willing to share them and taking the time to, to be with us this afternoon. So much appreciated and uh, thank you um, Mark for supporting in the background. So. We'll say cheerio for now. We'll look forward to seeing you at another one of our webinars. And um, thank you very much and goodbye.